Hey boys and girls, Global Force Wrestling fans of all ages, it is your boy BQ and this is the King of the Mountain Podcast YouTube channel. Would really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. And if you, if you have, maybe smash that little bell right next to it to ensure you get all the notifications. The goal is 2.5k by Bound for Glory, which I am on pace to do, but I'm hoping to get 3,000. reason I'm trying to do that is because I'm hoping when Bound for Glory rolls around that I can get this channel on uh, the media list for podcasts that the company outsources the wrestlers to for interviews to promote the pay-per-view. So please hit that subscribe button if you want to help me reach that goal and uh, make that happen. And hopefully we get some really big interviews on the channel when Bound for Glory rolls around. So, And if it is your first time on the channel, check out some of the content especially my interviews with Sienna and Ali. I'm really proud of both of them. They both came out great, so definitely check those out. So uh, topic of the day, the Global Wrestling Network. Seems like it has a, uh, maybe not an exact drop date, but it, it's supposed to come out this month in September. The name is Global Wrestling Network, not Global Force Wrestling Network. There's no force in it at all. It's Global Wrestling Network. That tells me there's a large vision behind this. And I've, I've talked about it a lot of the time on the podcast about the Global um, global Force Wrestling Amped Anthology. I talk about that all the time just because I loved it. And I, I really thought watching it that it was a clear-cut number two wrestling promotion. And I started seeing the vision that Jeff Jarrett has. And I, I have to believe he's trying to build towards something like that. And... You know, obviously, with all the partnerships going on, I feel that's the direction he's going. As I'm talking here, you guys in the comments, talk about what you want out of the Global Wrestling Network, what you would like to see, what would make you be a subscriber of it. How would you purchase it? What do you want to see on it? So here's some of my thoughts about it. Um, if I had to pick a price point for this, I think $6.99 is, is very fair for whatever they choose to do. However, I don't know if this is the same as the Total Nonstop app, which is, you know, roughly $4.99 here in the States, what it, you know, translates to. So I would imagine if if it's going to be the same thing, they're probably going to keep the price point pretty similar, which, you know, five bucks would still be cool. I think they could get a good seven bucks out of people for this. So I'm going to go off $6.99. Okay, that's my, that's just the number I'm going to use here, sake of argument. 699 12,000 subscribers that grosses 1 million dollars a year. Okay, gross, not net. So gross. I have to I have to believe we don't know that the uh, what the subscription rate was for or the buy rate was for Slammiversary. All we know is that it was triple what last year's was. The pay-per-views it, it's kind of sad to admit it, but they um, they've never sold well on the pay-per-views. They're usually in that like that eight to ten thousand range. So let's just say they have thirty thousand buys for Slammiversary. I think it's pretty safe to say if you know thirty thousand people, for instance, were willing to pay fifty bucks for the pay per view, I think you could get that uh, amount of subscribers right off the bat. And that's the United States. Remember, they're they're in one hundred twenty countries. So if they were able to do that. It would be about a, and I've done all the math on this, it would be a gross of $2.5 million a year. I wonder, will they stream Impact on it? They have already said it will be free episodes of Impact. I personally think it's probably going to be the rerun because no network is going to be like, okay, go ahead and stream the show, all good. With that being said, maybe that's why they already struck the deal with Pop TV for next year. Maybe Pop TV has said, okay, we expect you guys, you know, they sat down and had a meeting. We expect you guys to do 30,000 subscriptions the first year. We can still live with 200,000 viewers every week or 190,000. You know what I'm saying? So maybe there's there they work something out with Pop TV where they say, "Hey, this is this, you know, these are our our expectations." Pop TV said, "Okay, and these are our expectations." And they said, okay, this is going to work. So maybe Pop TV is the perfect partner in all of this. They couldn't go to a new network and say, hey, we're going to be streaming Impact on here. So I'm throwing numbers at you again. If they do, 
a hundred thousand subscribers, um, that's going to gross about eight million dollars. And I'm talking six ninety nine price tag, okay? And that is what the UK and India pay them combined. So now they're doubling. And again, this is gross, but they're essentially doubling uh, their revenue. In the Wrestling Observer report there, they had said, you know, they're not that pop TV, that deal was not going to provide them enough money to tape TV the way they want to. Now, maybe this this app or network, we don't have a whole lot of information on it yet, but maybe this network by, you know, essentially doubling what they bring in, maybe that's what's going to put them over the top to where they say, okay, we're comfortable um, taping four episodes at a time instead of six or we're comfortable doing um, a live program with every set of tapings, or there's always been the rumor that they want to do a pay-per-view after every six after every set of tapings. Say it's a six weeks tapings and a pay-per-view. So I'm starting to connect the dots here a little bit without being an expert. So I think they're going to do tremendous things. As far as what I want out of the network, um. I want to see, to me, like I said, it's if it's a global wrestling network, not global force, I have to assume that these connections that they're making with AAA, Noah, The Crash, at a minimum, we're able to get their big shows like the pay-per-views because these partnerships are great. They make for great TV. But how is global force wrestling going to monetize these partnerships? If they're paying to send, send Eddie Edwards to Japan and he wins a title, that's all fine and dandy. But how do they monetize that? Because they just probably paid to send him over there. Unless, you know, of course, uh, uh, Noah flipped the bill. But you guys get where I'm going with this. How do we monetize it? So this is perfect. If it's a global app and it's a worldwide app, then, maybe you know, are the people in Mexico able to get Bound for Glory to see their AAA and Crash guys? Are the people in Japan able to get it to see the Noah guys? So you guys see, all it, things are starting to come together a little bit. So I have to believe that is the vision on the app. And they're also getting kind of cozy, kind of friendly with some of some of the uh, popular independent promotions, AAW, um, uh, Wrestle Circus, the uh, the one in North Carolina. I wish I could remember the name. They use a lot of guys. Um, there's tried and true in Tennessee. So now if they start kind of building some partnerships with these smaller companies, you know, are they allowing an, a, um, an opportunity for at least the matches? Say, let's say tried and true pro wrestling in Tennessee has a show and um, the VOW is on the show, on the card, because they're on pretty much all their cards. You know, maybe they don't stream the whole event, but maybe they, they on the on the network, have VOW versus these two ham and eggers and it's promotion for the for the um, smaller company but one thing that I, I really stand on this if they're banking on the TNA library being the selling point I don't think that's gonna do it I really don't I think it's gonna get certain people who are fans of the company back then and they're willing to subscribe to the global network because hey they can watch the old tna stuff the old aj styles or whatever it is because face it there's people who subscribe to the other network because for, you know myself okay i'll use this for an example myself and kyle my old co-host were talking the other day and he said i didn't really want to subscribe to the network but i want to watch the the WCW stuff or the 80s stuff. So there's people who are subscribing to that. They might not give a shit about the current product and the uh, total divas and all that shit that's on there. But, you know, if they're able to watch the wrestling they grew up off of, you know, that's an investment that they're willing to make. So maybe people look at this opportunity too and say, okay, I don't really care for the current Global Force Impact product, but I like the old TNA stuff because there's a lot of those people out there. So I really think you know, maybe 30K in the first year is very realistic. And if they get it up to that um, 100K, like I said, now now things get really interesting. But folks, in the comments here, please let me know what you would like from the network. What would excite you, make you want to subscribe to it. I have a feeling most of you feel the same way that I do. And I will hammer this home until we see this app, this network come out. If they just... 
the only selling point is the current episode of Impact and the TNA library. It's not going to do what they want to do. They have an opportunity to make this very special and something that the other network isn't. And if they're able to provide this platform for these smaller companies and these other companies from other countries, then Global Force Wrestling becomes the company to partner with. So let me know in the comments, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It's BQ, and we'll talk to you guys soon.